It's time for the most anticipated new Mopar show of 2023. The world of Mopar is coming to Summit Motorsports Raceway in Norwalk, Ohio September 22nd through the 24th. Don't miss this fun-filled weekend in celebration of everything Dodge Chrysler and Plymouth. For more info on this show go to summitmotorsportspark.com. Just outside of Columbus, Ohio, you'll find the county of Reynoldsburg, Ohio, which is said to be the birthplace of the tomato. For Mopar Freaks, it was the birthplace of the blueprint for many successful Mopar shows that would follow. This is Robert Wolf reporting for the Center of the Mopar World for August of 2023, the Mopar Nationals in Columbus, Ohio. Just like the five-piece rock bands, the Mopar Nats hit on a winning lineup that consisted of an event that has a swap meet, drag racing, a burnout contest, and a car show with judging. That formula has been tweaked by many over the years, but it remains the bedrock that most major Mopar events are built on. All right, these, this father and son combo here, what, what year is your red truck? 77. And what year is yours? 78. So you guys decided to build trucks rather than cars. This seems to be a trend coming on. What do you think about the truck market? I think it's getting pretty big actually. It's yep. starting to grow and we like that. Well you look at the Broncos and stuff and they go for stupid money at Barrett. I think these are going to be right behind them in the in the future for sure. Yep. So what have you done to this one behind you? Uh, it's a 78 trail duster. It's been fully, fully restored, frame off restoration. Uh, 80 cylinder heads did a 444 on support up to a 500 cubic inch. Right. Makes roughly 600 horsepower. a and did the transmission. Big block 727 mm -hmm. transmission. Full drive line was redone. I mean, everything top to bottom is cool. completely restored. Yeah. It's a factory color combination on it? No, it was a cream color and beige. Right. We saw this color combo on the uh, flyer and we liked it a lot more. Yeah, so. yeah it's definitely a hot color. Viter <clears throat> Barter Shop did all the paint work on it. Okay. And your red truck, you've got a Hemi in that thing? 572 Hemi. Uh, Andy, Andy motor? Yes, Andy motor. Okay, what else you got done to it? Uh, a and transmission put in it, drivetrain done. Um, all the paint work was done by Cross's body shop on that one there. Mm -hmm. Roughly pushing 700 horsepower. Cool. What are you working on next? I'm not sure yet. A Ram Charger <laughs> or a uh, 75 Club Cab uh, camper right. special. Cool. Beautiful trucks, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Must work for the collectors. Uh, what right? inspired yeah, you yeah. to well, cut and channel this thing? Well, I had purchased a chassis from a good friend of mine that had did this to a 63 Dodge. And I uh, wanted to make it fit the frame. Okay. And uh, I got good fabrication skills. <laughs> yeah, obviously. So I wanted to display them. <laughs> well, show me where you cut it. Okay, I I, sna I snapped the center line right down the middle. Right. And then I went two and a half inches off center. Okay. I made two cuts. Took five inches out of it. Right. And then I had one well down the middle. So it basically took. One panel out of the grill is what happened, or how did that work? I, I cut out two and a half on this side, two and a half on that side to give me my five. Right. And I did the same in the back to keep my full license plate. Right. But everything has got five inches out of it. Okay, from front to back. Yeah. It's not pulled in more in the front? I raked it in raked just it in by hand. Yeah. Just for what I thought would look good. Right. Oh, that's your case. Thank you. Took me uh, 12 years. Only 12 years, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Two of them blocking the roof. <laughs> Should have painted it white. <laughs> yeah, oh, I, I love this color. <laughs> All right, you got to tell me about this. Oh, uh, this is Miss Kitty. She's a Mopar cat, mm -hmm. of course. She's probably got, I guess, close to a million miles on her with the old truck back there. Uh, we started her off as a, as a kitten. And, 
the traveling, she loves it. Really? She loves to travel. She just she'll oh, in go the get, car. She just lays down and yeah, she's got a place. Um, I took that old 07, stripped the interior out completely, and then rebuilt it with uh, aggressive amount of interior. You don't even have to have the air on it; it will stay mm -hmm. comfortable in there for her. But we still run the air. You know, I've got a, a small thing that keeps it cool. Once it gets cool in temperature, it stays like that. Does she get to vote on a car? Yeah, she could. <laughs> I think she could. For those that don't know, this is Cream. Um, he is... Are senior. You, are you senior judge now? Yeah, senior. Been, been senior for what, about close to 10 years? How, how'd you let that happen? <laughs> how, um, me, we, me and Jimmy started talking, and he, uh, he figured we got to figure it out you know how many years that I had with, with Chrysler mm -hmm. experience there's not many guys that have that right how many years were you mechanic I'm about I'm about 50 years okay that's and at the dealerships I stayed until the the K cars came I stayed as long as I could and with Chrysler we have a thing you, you never retire you never leave right because when I left you never left. They called. They would constantly call for different things to be taken care of. You know, and you'd have to I'd scoot over there and fix whatever they need. You know, and that was about it. So when you came in and started judging, your goal was to simplify the judging here to make it more fair, correct? Is That's that what correct. you tried to do that That's, you told me over the years? Yes. And you started with five pages of judging, and, oh now, and now you've condensed it down to one page of important one things, page right? Of important. Right. And all of the judges now are on the same page. I give them the same authority that I walk around it and be able to judge is this a scratch or is it a factory blemish? Mm -hmm. Those kind of things. And, and then when it gets over that, then we just, you know, I'll make a call or Michael make a call and we will say, okay, this is the way it is. So do you go back and look at him a second time if it gets close? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And sometimes three times. Right. And then sometimes I'll even get Jimmy to come over, you know, and we'll look at it because Stan was one of our senior judges. Stan Hardcastle passed away, yes. friend of everybody, so you know, we're sad, sad to see him go. Real yeah. sad yeah. because Stan knew things and, you know, his family owned the dealership. Mm -hmm. so. He grew up at the dealership just like I did. Mm -hmm. Except I was in New Orleans and he was in uh, Nashville. Right. And you learn and you learn these things. And it's uh, I, I miss being down in the city, going to work. When I started, I was just a kid. Mm -hmm. And my dad got me in Star Chrysler. Usually it, it went into reverse because you would do the Dodge dealerships or the, the bottom and you worked your way up and he got to where I started at the, at the top and just worked there and back then it was, everything was, you know, it was make sure these cars were right because we had a clientele back then that was New Orleans that they wanted things, they didn't want defects in mm -hmm. the cars. If we got a car come in, and let's say the transmission was out, and we didn't have the parts to repair it, Star Price had the cars on the roof. I don't know if you remember that. Mm -hmm. We thought we had one on the roof, and we would take that car, and we would cannibalize the car, we'd write the part numbers down what we took. At the end, before the next new car years come out, which would be uh, July or June, somewhere in there, we took all of those parts on the paper mm -hmm. and give it to the parts manager. Ordered what you needed. He ordered everything. All the technicians would jump together and would put the car back together, and then it could be sold back, you know, as a new car. Well, that's crazy. And then the other, you want me to tell you about the Hemi stories? Yeah, tell me some Hemi stories. Star had a, Star had what we call, it was the Hemi room. And nobody knew about it, just a few technicians knew about it. But it was invisible. 
you couldn't see it. You could walk right past it. There was no door to this thing. But it was a it was a closet and it was loaded with all the 426 stuff got shoved into that thing. Were you guys racing those things at the time, or were they oh, just... Yeah, 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 we raced them back then. Uh, now, me, I have, I've have never gotten the pictures to you, which I need to. NAS, it was NASCAR stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it was, it was good days back then. Mm -hmm. I mean, when we were racing, uh, they had a story. My, my boss back then, my cousin, he went and he was buying a new motor. Everybody laughed. He had a 64 or 65 Dodge. Brought it from Metairie to Daytona. They go in, no motor, mm -hmm. no nothing. Everybody was laughing until they opened up the, the gates for the Grand National side and Petty backed in that. He had him back in a, a the big trailer truck mm -hmm. and uh, EJ got inside of that thing and they were lined up three on each side, him both sides. And they were petty built motors? Yes. And he went in there and he says, which one you want? And he said, I'll take this one right here. And he loaded her down and uh, that's what he used. She's all right. She ain't going away. He can take her. So back to the judging here. What is the biggest misconception people have now of the judging at the Mopar Nationals? Well, the biggest thing is I think one of the things that I emphasize on is, is fairness. And I want everybody to be fair. You cannot take two cars like I'm gonna pick those and sometimes how can you take this car and judge it against another car that it's not even close you, you can't do that it, it messes the thing you know it just messes up the whole dynamics of right. everything you want everything to where everybody feels like they've been treated fair and that's what we want you mm -hmm. know I'll, I'll go and I'll talk to them before you couldn't get your sheets right now you gotta get your sheets. after after they get the show yes, but the show's got to be over so it's fair so they get it sunday that's right and mm -hmm. we can give them out probably saturday we're gonna do it this mm -hmm. time well you see i'll show you right now where things have just condensed down they're they're very little now that's it right that's it right there this is it and what's the biggest value on that sheet when someone does the restoration well it, the closer it is now you know me for a lot of years mm -hmm. i am a nut with concourse you mm -hmm. know that right and i want things close to original as possible look, i've had a friend of mine come over he just passed away another mopar guy i have a big c body and on the belt the, the bottom the the sill plate okay the body itself it had a big old ugly where they did the welding back then the, the solder mm -hmm. joints big blotch on there and he says what are you going to do with this? I said, nothing. It's it the way it stays came, like right? that. Yeah. yeah, it's going to stay like that. Why? I said, because it came like that from the factory. We need to leave it like that and emphasize off of that that this is the way it came. You had, back then, when I was at the dealer, you had multiple car lines. Multiple car lines. I mean, all these factories, California out there, you had Los Angeles, you had... Um, St. Louis. Louis, yeah. Yeah, you have Tam Tramic, mm -hmm. all these cars, and they're all building them. Now, do you think that all those cars come out the same? Well, we know they don't. It's impossible. Yeah. Because the decals. The decals were this away for this one, and then I guess they never got the, you know, on the other end. Well, well it's, way a, put it's, them in. it's a human built car, so I mean, it's going to be right. different. Everyone's going to be a little different. And I have seen, and you have seen, strange things out there and you're like how did this happen but it does yeah it does and when guys say it's not like that or whatever and no it wasn't made to be like it but it is because yeah. this is what happened on the assembly line and it's just like that you yeah. know but these cars they're all made the same but they're different right and if you take a good look the thing that separates when we're judging and I really emphasize this on all the guys and try to teach the general public what's going on, how to win. I get down to the bolts and the screws mm -hmm. and all to make sure that that's like it was when they put it back together. There's things that are correct and not correct. And when they're correct, it's 
beautiful, but me and Jimmy was talking. We, when I get up here, we talk sometimes. Stories coming off the line, engineering flaws, engineering pluses, mm -hmm. which was the best car for this and all. Well, if you can get this one, it's just about flawless if you can find it. We're talking about cars in the 90s and the 80s and things like that. And uh, it's just like all of our older cars, when they come out, some of them were really, really flawless cars. They didn't have a lot of problems. But when they did, it was something, it could be something so simple as a, a belt squealing or a pulley that's out of play. You know, it's things like that that we have to battle back then, but it was still, it was nothing. Mm -hmm. Over the overhaul scale of things and doing things, and I'll never forget when the when the K cars and that sort of stuff come out. I knew that there was going to be challenges with these cars, but you got to give something a chance. You just can't look at it and walk away from it. And uh, I looked at them and went over the little cars. And I mean, how can you beat 49 miles a gallon mm -hmm. back then? These things got fantastic miles. And they were cheap. And they were cheap. Yeah. And then we had, uh, back then we had all of the, we had the police cars that was locked up back then. I mean, we did them all. And wherever I was, at the dealers in New Orleans, if I moved, because that was common, we would start another, you know, dealer, and they'd be calling me, uh, Troop L, police cars. Okay, so they'd send me something over there. I would probably tell you a story I shouldn't have told, but it was it was funny at the time. We had the Plymouth Furies, the Grand Furies, and they were running pretty good, so my buddy comes in there, State Trooper, and he says, Joe, he says, these guys are eating me up with these Trans Ams. I cannot catch them. I said, well, there's not a lot that I can do at the dealership. Because if I if we get caught modifying these, the federal government back then was on you. Mm -hmm. Everything was locked. They had plates and things to keep the car from going X amount. And they had 125 mile an hour certified heads on the speedometer. So I said, okay. And I thought, and I thought, I said, no, we can't have this. It's kind of silly. How can you be a, a, a police officer and you can't catch a car? You know, that's just a car, just a Trans Am. I said, so I loaded up my tools. And I took them away from the dealership. <laughs> took all those restrictors off the car. Threw them in my box. I said, okay, let's go. We got on I-10. And... He was, at, he was at about 100, 110, 120, 125. It's buried and it's bouncing. The needle's just sitting there bouncing. Then he went to old Tommy up on the dash. You know, and hit that, he activated that one. It came up. It was at 131, you know, and it kept going. So just, just keep her down. Let's see what she's gonna do. That thing got up to about to the 140s before you know, we said, okay, that was enough. They was flying. So he said, let me see what's gonna happen now. They couldn't run off and get away from him now. He got them. You know, so that was a good thing for them. But back then, that's what it was. It was impossible to do anything. They didn't want you to, you know, to make these things where they can fly. And now we have cars that are, what, a thousand horsepower? Mm -hmm. I just did, what do they call them? Uh, scat pack? Mm -hmm with the, my son was telling me, RT, scat bag. Guy bought the car 14 miles, motor just, boom. I guess he downshifted wrong or whatever, but anyway, went through it and was able to save that, that Hemi. It had, it had one little, little hole in about that big as my fingernail in the one of the cylinders where it come apart. But would you believe that motor was still running it dropped the intake valve and it punched it right through the piston. It fell in the oil pan with all the rest of the things, a little parts here and there. The motor never quit. That's crazy. The motor kept running mm -hmm. until I took it apart. Then I took it apart. We went through everything and changed out what needed to be done. It runs like, you know, crazy like they do. Well, 
We were having fun with them back then. We're having fun with them now, right? That's right. And we're going to keep on yep. having As long as I can keep them, that's what I tell Jim all the time. As long as there's somebody on the dance floor to dance with, why shut it down? And we've gone up on our cars this year. We've gone up. I don't have all of this, the, the fancy stuff right now, but I believe that'll come back because people put them in their garage. They've already won. Mm -hmm. So why bring it back every year like you know something like I do because I'm a nut but <laughs> it's just the way it is well thanks you know? for your dedication thanks for coming out each year and volunteering to do this because I'm sure you don't get paid what, what the hours you put in so no never <laughs> never never man handcrafted and curated by Mopar enthusiasts for Mopar enthusiasts subscribe today and get 12 monthly mailed issues of MCG, access to over 400 digital issues, free monthly classified ads, and a free Mopar t-shirt for only $39.95. The elephant in the room at the Mopar Nats is that Mopar Corporate doesn't support the event. These days the name of the show has been legally changed to the Nats and you won't find Dodge officially promoting their products here. These days Dodge is putting on a Mopar show of their own in Detroit called Roadkill Nights on that very same weekend. With its close proximity on the map, I don't have to tell you that it has a serious effect on the attendance at the Nats these days. I think if I were running things, I would have to consider moving the Nats one week prior to get it off that same weekend as the Dodge event in Detroit. With that being said, the Mopar Nat still draws a respectable race car count. Some seriously rare cars, as well as a gackle of vintage race cars, along with members of their crew who race competitively at this racetrack back in the golden age of drag racing. If you like your Mopars a little smaller, then the Nats Model Contest, hosted each year by Autono, is for you. It includes a full field of out-of-the-box, resin-fabricated, and diorama pieces meticulously crafted to perfection. This year's Nats produced some of the nicest Mopars doing burnouts that I've ever seen. And in the end, show promoter Jim Belinda called for a burn-off between the three crowd favorites. After extensive prior burnouts, these guys didn't have a lot left in them, but the D100 pickup took home first place. Walking through the pits provided a lot of great options for Mopar Collector's Guide magazine feature cars. This original owner, all original Charger was one of the coolest 1974s I've ever seen. It was powered by a 400, 4 speed no less, but what really put it over the top was the interior. Kudos on checking off the great special order boxes on this one when it was new. As far as modified cars go, it was the 65 AFXer that tripped my trigger. Its stance, heavy metal flake paint, and a Weber carburetor setup made me think I was attending a race in the late 1960s. All right, no hemming under here, wedge. It's a wedge, you right? Do something different. Everybody expects a hemming. Right. Wedge guy. You want to do something different for so, an intake. And no fuel injectors. Those yeah, are Webers, right? They're even Webers. Yeah. Okay. And. People sold them to me said, uh, I don't know that that's going to work, mm -hmm. but good luck. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so you're still in the good luck tuning stage, yeah, right? I'm, I'm right in that, I got uh, about 10 minutes of tuning. I did a little bit this morning and actually I think it didn't like what I did because coming down here it parked a little bit. So, right, right. So we got a little bit to do, learning a little bit about Weber's. Uh -huh. Had a couple guys that run Volkswagens and run those carburetors and so they were giving me a little education. They asked me if it starts, I said yeah. 
He said, well, at Idle? I said, yeah. <laughs> I said, like 900. Like, You're over a major hurdle already. <laughs> I'm like, really? Oh, yeah, because getting them to start and idle, yeah, that's, that's the hard that's part. That's 90% of that's, it, right? That's 90% <laughs> of it, yeah. And you know what? what? What threw me is they run on two to three pounds of fuel pressure. Really? That doesn't even sound good. No, it's not right. You're yeah. used to pumping a bunch of fuel well, in there. Yeah, yeah. like so I bought a one to three regulator and ruined the first one. Right. So then I had to do a double. A friend of mine suggested. So I took it down to seven pounds with one of them and then put that into the one to four. If you like this video, please hit the like button below to help us grow this channel. And please, please, please smash the subscribe to Mopar TV button before you leave. It's absolutely free. As always, if you want to see full features on these and many more Mopars from this year's Nats, make sure you have a subscription to the only Mopar magazine that matters, Mopar Collector's Guide. This has been Robert Wolf reporting for the Mopar Nats, and until next month, I'll see you on the pages of MCG.